So let's get on to this. Is there anti-blackness within the Bible? All right, well, during the times of the books of Solomon, Psalms, David and his son Solomon's times, there seems to be less friction with Ethiopians and Egyptians during that time. But in other times, there does seem to be a lot of friction between the Egyptians and Ethiopians. Uh, in the book of Acts, an Ethiopian unit comes to Jerusalem to worship. Showing the Jewish religion was known and practiced all the way into the Sudan. He returns to Africa, and this is believed to be the beginnings of Christianity in Africa. Simon of Niger, one of the first apostles, also teaches at the Church of Antioch. They also say he may or may not be the man who helped Jesus carry the cross. Again, blacks all over the Bible, and sometimes presented in a positive light. However, other books seem to be greatly anti-Ethiopian, anti-Egyptian, anti-black, anti-Africans. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of wars against Africa, as depicted in 2 Chronicles 14, 12, and 3. So the Lord smote the Ethiopian before Esa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them into Gerar, and the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and for his hosts, and they carried away very much spoil. Second Chronicles shows a Pharaoh coming up and looting the temples of Israel. Second Chronicles 21, 15. And thou shalt have great sickness and disease in thy bowels until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness of the day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against him Jerob, Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabians, that they were near the Ethiopians. And they came into Judah and break into it and carried away the substance that was found in the king's house and into his sons also and his wives, that they were never a son left to him, said Jehoshaphat, the youngest of his sons. So this is speaking of uh, what they believe to be Pharaoh Shashunik. He came up in the Israel and conquered him and took all the gold out of their temples. So... Yeah, Africans were coming up there whooping them Jews' ass from time to time again. So you're going to have anti-blackness within their Bible. Um, specifically, the book of Isaiah seems to have a lot of animosity towards uh, e Egypt and Ethiopia, Africa. Isaiah 20 and 4. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptian prisoners and the Ethiopians' captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Rejoicing in a loss they had to the Assyrians. Isaiah 20 and 5. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Cush, their expectation, and Mezraim, Egypt, their glory and boast. Pause. Now what we have right here in this verse, Isaiah chapter 20, verse 5. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Cush, their expectation, and Egypt, their glory. He's speaking about black people, Africans. Cush was their expectation where the might, the greatest bow warriors came from. And Egypt was their glory with all their buildings. He's talking about black people, and he's telling you that Egypt and Cush is connected here also. See, people don't want to get into this biblical ties whenever it, whenever it gets to it they try to throw it out because the bible the torah is telling you that the egyptians and the kushites are one and the same and then we come to one of the most anti-black verses within the torah jeremiah 13 and 23 can the ethiopian a black man can the ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Hold on, son. Hold on. May ye be good that are accustomed to do evil? So the Ethiopian is evil. The black is evil. You see, we, 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 we had a problem with them people over there in the desert for a long time. And sometimes it was friendly. Sometimes it was friendly with the Hebrews. Sometimes it was friendly with the Arabs. There was black blood running all through them. And there was that Middle Eastern blood running through Africa around there, all the way down into Kenya. But man, man, them people do not like us. 
There's no way to defend it. It's just blatant anti-blackness. Even if it's just an analogy, again, Herod's to show you. The Ethiopian is not one of us and has dark skin. We're not Israeli, we're not Jews. Are some Jews black? Yes. Are the most of them black? No. Why? Because there's rampant anti-blackness within their books. It's just the truth. Who are black Americans? We are a mixture of Africans and a few other spices on the top, but mainly 80 to 90% we are Africans from West, Central, not just there, Southern Africa, East Africa, Kenya, Madagascar, mainly Mozambique. That's the truth about it. I'm not ashamed about it at all. Because I'm not, I don't want to talk about some Al Bundy shit about four touchdowns in a game, all them time, all that thousands of years ago. Whether the Egyptians or the Jews, I'm worried about what's going on right now today. And looking to the past and trying to say we this and trying to say we that and going off in the la la land, that's not going to help anybody. Realizing who we are and what we are. We are black men. We are Africans. Everybody that got black skin and an afro on your head, I don't care how much perm you put in your head or a wig you put over it, is a Negro. If you have an Afri afro, you are a Negro. If you have an afro, you are from Africa. And I know y'all are so ashamed of it. Y'all look at Africa and you just say, my God, these people. Ugh. I get it. But I'm not ashamed of my people because I know they've been up before. And then this is just, you know, we got knocked down on the mat. We're going to get back up. Now, further anti-blackness seems to get into the uh, late antiquity of scholarly Judaism. So, debating on whether Ethiopian, Black African, or ethn ethnicity, Kush, I would say the Israelis don't really like... Don't really take to the Africans at times. Um, in the Holy Book, the New Testament seems to lighten up the rhetoric a bit, as it's known to do that. Uh, some scholars debate the early rab rabbinical scholars are responsible for early anti-blackness within the world. Some people say the Jews are responsible for anti-blackness and racism. I don't believe that. It's It's been there before that. We had problems with the Romans. We had problems with the Arabs. We had problems with everybody else. They ain't blameless, but there is, uh, namely, the curse of Ham explained in the Babylonian Talmud. The Talmud is another book written in early antiquity um, that some Jews believe are connected to their Bible. So it's the Torah, and then the Christians put on the New Testament, and they're saying theirs is the Torah and the Talmud. A few other books as well, but the Talmud was written in the 6th century. Um, another verse, Tenet 1.6, tells the story of Ham actually sleeping with a dog, also a raven, and him and the raven come out of the ark together black. Rabbi Abraham Malmid, in his work, The Image of the Black in Jewish Culture, says, Wherever black and cushy occur or implied in rabbinic literature, the words are made to bear some or all the negative connotations of fear, violence, bestiality, promiscuity, deviance, etc., etc., now, however, outwardly, many other groups have repeatedly connected the Jew and the African together. Voltaire, one of Europe's greatest thought leaders, says, One regards the Jews the same as the Negroes, a species inferior to humanity, and several other statements come throughout history, connecting the two to less than. And even until this day, many white nationalist hatred is aimed at the two groups. But still the two groups, regardless at whoever claim to be, have no real camaraderie, many Sephardic Jews being involved in the transatlantic slave trade. As the religion tells them, slavery is okay as long as it's not a Jew being enslaved. Now, side note on that, my real blame is for slavery as black people. There's no one for us to really blame but ourselves for that. Um, that's another story. 
But in conclusion to all this, back to the beginning. It doesn't matter what we call ourselves, even what religion we adhere to. Our issue is lack of collective thought. We don't want to be associated with ourselves, but everyone has a negative name for us in every language. Whether straight-haired, Ethiopian, Abyssinian, African, or Black American, no, I judge people on deeds and heart. All these religions have failed us. They have never come to our aid or treated us well. The others in these religions, they have never came to us. The Christians have never helped us. The Muslims have never helped us. None of these other religions have ever helped us. They've only taken from us. But our hope is an escapism that we can go into these religions and we can tell ourselves we're these people and that people and we don't have to deal in the reality of our current issue as a collective. No. The Chinese didn't look to any book or outside religion. They looked to education, economics, industrialization, and technology advancements. Then, they all agree, they are on a mandate from heaven as a group. They say they are the chosen people. They don't look to any groups. They say that they are in a mandate from heaven. It's not written anywhere. They just say it. I believe we have a mandate as well. We are the first man, the black man. At one point on this earth, in fact, for the most history of the earth, there were nothing here but black skinned people. Black skinned people with straight hair, soft hair, and black skinned hair people, black skinned people with frizzy hair with afros. And everybody with an afro comes from Africa. Show me where that's not true. Even Polynesians, they come from Africa. So we have to be truthful first. It's going to take a lot of hard work. No shortcuts. One. And uh, let me just kick some final thoughts on this real quick. I ain't trying to attack anyone's religion on what you believe. Um, I grew up in the church. I've seen a lot of fakeness and I've seen a lot of realness. Some things that you can't explain. Stories for other days. But we got to get back to our connection with our creator. Not what the label is. Not I'm this and I'm doing a lie and I'm a child of God and, and, and I'm a Hebrew and you, you ain't this and you ain't that. Them is some of the worst people you could meet. We are going to be judged by our actions. And we have to focus on who we're going to be morally, socially, and spiritually as a people. And it's not, it's not saying that we are these people or those people. That's not going to cut it. Again, are there black people in Israel during the beginning, during the time of David? Yes. There are black people in there all through their history. Is a majority of that country black, Negro, black-skinned people walking around with Afros like me and you? No, that's not the norm. Just like America. The greatest part of America's history is black Americans. We've done some unbelievable shit. We ain't the majority here, and we don't run shit. That seems to be uh, something that continues on with our people over history. But whoever you are, remember what the most important thing is, your connection with your God. Not labeling it, you this, you that, you that, you this. With the North American Negro, the American African, the vicious Akata, we are God's chosen people. And that ain't about no book. That's about blood. We are the first men before Abraham. One.